Happy New Year, everybody. It is the 2nd of January. And in today's video, we're just gonna take a bit of time to think about what happened to the housing market in 2023 and how 2024 has the potential to be even more painful than 2023 was. So that's what I wanna talk about in this video. I haven't got any reports or any stats or anything to try and convince you with today. I just wanna try and talk to you honestly as to how I see the market at the moment and why 2024 is shaping up to be a very painful year. And I don't just mean for sellers. It's gonna be a painful year for buyers as well and plus pretty much all participants in the housing market. Now, before I get into the video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to everyone that supported the channel throughout 2023. We had over 2 million views last year and I think we've got about 65,000 subscribers now overall. So thank you to everyone for continuing to support the channel. But coming back to the housing market, I think it's fair to say that 2023, for many of the people that will be watching this channel that have a what you would call a bearish preference to see house prices go down, is that 2023 didn't deliver what we were hoping. We were hoping to see substantial nominal falls in the housing market. And when I say nominal, I mean the actual number value of the house price. So a house price is falling from maybe 400,000 to 350,000, so a 50,000 pound nominal fall. Now we do know that house prices have come down substantially more from a real term perspective. So when you take into account wages and inflation and all of that, but really we we're hoping to see nominal falls. And if you go by the major indices, such as Halifax, Nationwide, ONS, Rightmove, et cetera, house prices were down somewhere between one to 5% last year. And I think many of us were expecting those indices to report potentially double figures last year in a single year. And that hasn't played out. Now, that hasn't completely changed my view on the housing market. I'm always watching and adjusting my viewpoint. But overall, I think that those indices didn't really fully capture what happened in the housing market last year, or at least the areas that I've been monitoring and what I'm seeing, the HPIs, the house price indices, don't actually match up to what I've been seeing actually myself. So I, I, at the moment, I'm not giving too much weight to those indices. I'm putting more weight on my own research and tracking of the properties that I'm interested in and seeing what properties are selling, what properties aren't selling, seeing which ones have reductions and stuff like that to be able to form my own opinion. And I'd recommend that you guys take the same approach because regardless of what any national index says, your local market is gonna be completely unique and the type of property that you're looking at is gonna perform it differently as well. So I'd recommend doing that yourself, tracking properties that are in, of interest to you in your local market, the areas you're considering buying or selling so that you can fully paint your own picture and not relying on these house price indices which may not be capturing what is truly going on. So why do I think that 2024 is gonna be more painful than 2023? Well, if I think about 2023 overall, it was, it was a year of hope really, wasn't it, for both buyers and sellers. In this video, I'm gonna talk about both buyers and sellers because I wanna aim it at both of them because often a buyer is a seller as well. And 2023 was a year of hope. From a buyer's perspective, it was a hope that all of the bad things that were happening were just temporary and the interest rates weren't gonna get that high and that the housing market was gonna have a little bit of a blip and then it's gonna continue on upwards and that people that were struggling to sell their house at the higher price, the market would eventually catch up with them and they'll be able to sell their price. And from a buyer's perspective, there was hope that finally house prices might start to correct to make things a bit fairer really for the younger generation that have been completely priced out of the housing market in the UK. And they were hoping after waiting the best part of 15 years since the global financial crisis, that house prices might start to make a little bit more sense again. And unfortunately, that hasn't fully played out yet either. So there was lots of hope on both sides. And here we are 12 months later at the start of 2024. It's the 2nd of January, 2024. And there's gonna be people questioning what they do now. So I'm gonna try and look at it from both the buyer and seller perspective and explain why potentially 2024 is gonna be even more painful for both parties. So if we start with sellers, cause I think that's the more obvious one. There have been a lot of sellers that have been holding on to unrealistic prices throughout 2023, hoping that the market is going to rebound. Now, although the HPIs don't report that house prices have fallen as much as we were expecting, they are still forecasting or predicting that house prices are gonna to continue to fall in 2024. Not a single one of the major indices are expecting house prices to recover this year. So the buyers that were hopeful, sorry, the sellers that were hopeful last year 
that if they waited long enough that things would be okay, I think this is when the pain really hits home. They're going to have to really face up to the reality that if they want to move and if they're serious about moving, they're going to actually have to make the price cuts that they haven't made over the past year. And I'm sure you guys have seen it yourself in your local market. I have seen countless properties around here that have come on and it's clear from day one that they are overvalued and they're still sat there 12 months later at the same price or perhaps they've done that minimum 2% right move reduction to get at the top of the listings again. But when you're taking 2% off maybe a house that's 500,000 pound, it's basically pointless. It's not gonna bring you lots of new sellers. You might get a little bit more interest from the alerts that are sent out, but it's very unlikely to lead to a new buyer. You have to be realistic if you are reducing the price of your property. So I think there's gonna be a lot of pain for those sellers that were hoping that things were gonna be better in 2024, the market was gonna suddenly rebound and they were gonna get the prices that they were hoping or expecting their properties were worth based on the 2022 peak, which clearly they aren't worth that price anymore. So there's a lot of pain to come for those sellers. Now sellers aren't alone in this, buyers are also in store for a lot of pain, especially I would say probably for the first quarter or the first four to six months, maybe even the first half of 2024. What we're gonna see over the next few months, I think in the media is quite a bit of positivity around the housing market. There's gonna be a lot of talk about the first Bank of England interest rate cut, which I'm gonna come back to in a moment. There's gonna be a lot of talk about mortgage rates coming down. There's gonna be a lot of talk about the activity in the housing market picking up. And because asking prices traditionally go up in the spring, we're gonna see various news and media outlets covering the house prices are going up in the first quarter or first half of 2024. Even if what we're seeing actually happening seems to paint a different picture, I can easily see that these house price indices are gonna report very positive news over the next few months. So from a potential buyer perspective, someone that's been sidelined for the past 12 months, it's gonna be sat there, it's gonna be painful to see these headlines. I know myself from someone that's sat on the sidelines at the moment watching the market, seeing these headlines come out, it's like a kick in the teeth, especially when you know most of the time these headlines are wrong. So be prepared for that pain. I still think that patience will be rewarded. It seems very, very unlikely that the housing market is gonna suddenly rebound this year. So there isn't much harm to continuing to wait because I think it will be become very clear if the housing market suddenly does catch fire and starts going again, you're gonna know pretty swiftly, especially if you're monitoring your own area, you'll see those properties that have been unsold from up suddenly start to go sold STC. So keep an eye on the areas you're interested in because if you're watching Rightmove on a regular basis, you're monitoring those properties, you'll be one of the first people to know when those properties start selling quicker than they have been in the past or whether they sell without reductions, you'll be able to get a feel for whether the market is changing. So really focus on your local area and try not to pay too much attention to the house price indices and the news reports that come off the back of them because they paint a national picture and potentially because they aren't quite capturing what is actually happening in the housing market at the moment. So there's plenty of pain there for both potential sellers and buyers. And coming back to the first Bank of England interest rate cut, that's one thing I wanna talk about as well as we're gonna see a lot of coverage about that this year, well before it happened as well. There's gonna be a lot of media coverage for people trying to pressure the Bank of England into making these cuts. Now, we do know that inflation has come down in 2023. We are still well above target at the moment. And the latest reports show, despite the fact it is overall, the headline figure is coming down, there's still a lot of elements to inflation at the moment that are being very, very stubborn. So I think this journey from four to 2% is it gonna be quite a slow one. Now, whether the Bank of England will consider cutting rates before they hit their target, we can't guarantee what they will do. Now, if they're doing their job properly, they will wait until they get to the target. But at the same time, there is concerns around the UK economy. GDP was basically flat last year. So there's every chance we could slip into recession or it could stay flat. So the Bank of England are gonna be keen to cut rates as soon as they can to try to prevent the country actually entering into a full-blown recession. But I think the thing you really need to watch with all of these articles is actually just keep an eye on the mortgage rates because there's gonna be a lot of talk about mortgage rates coming down, but actually they've probably already come down quite a bit. Basically the markets have front run the Bank of England just like they did when interest rates were going up over the past 12 to 18 months. The markets front run the Bank of England. The markets were up at 6% mortgages 
well before the Bank of England got to its 5.25% peak, which is at, at the moment. It may go higher, but it probably won't in the, in the near term. So at the moment, I think what's happening, the markets are now front running it back down. So mortgage rates have dropped down to below 5% and sometimes even lower in specific cases. And they may go a fraction lower, but until the Bank of England starts cutting rates, I don't think mortgages are gonna go much lower in the next few months. I think they've come down because the markets have front run it a bit, but I think until the Bank of England actually makes those first cuts, I think the next step down is a little bit further away. So keep that in mind as well. The markets, the mortgage rates front run the Bank of England up and the front running them down as well. So there might not be as much stimulus to the market over the next few months as people expect from the lower mortgage rates because it's already happened really over the past two or three months. So that's my thoughts on the housing market at the moment. I think there's a lot of pain there for sellers who have to get real about their pricing. There's a lot of potential pain there for buyers who are gonna to have to stay on the sidelines and see these difficult articles coming out that are talking about activity and positivity and house prices going up in the housing market. It's gonna be extremely painful. And all of the market participants, you've got the state agents, it's gonna be very, very painful for them with transaction levels so low. People like mortgage brokers, we're seeing a lot of people just remortgaging with their same provider because they can't afford to remortgage with a new provider so mortgage brokers won't have as much work. Same with conveyances, people that are doing removals, anyone connected to the estate agency industry, it's gonna be a very painful year for, I think. Now, if you wanna see my latest thoughts on the housing market, I'm gonna post a link to my Twitter account in the pinned top comment. And if you wanna understand why, potentially the house price indices aren't actually capturing what's happening in the UK housing market at the moment, I'm gonna pop up a video right in front of me now which talks about why UK house prices are broken and I'll see you guys in that video.